Hello and welcome to this video that goes through some moments questions that I've been sent. Um, the first question is ABC is a lamanio in the shape of an equilateral triangle of a shape side 20 centimeters. A force of 8 newtons acts vertically downwards at B as shown in the diagram. Work out the moments of this force. So for this situation we've got to remember that the first thing is that the formula for moments is equal to force times perpendicular distance um, and we're told that the side of the triangles are 20 so we know that this length here is 20 and this one is going to be 20 as well in case we need this one so work out the moment of this force about a so we're going to work out the moment of it we've got a downwards force that's acting directly downwards um, and we are interested in it at B so to do this one we're going to take a, an angle of 60 degrees because it's an equilateral triangle so we know that the interior angles are 60 degrees and we end up with a diagram that looks like this where we have the um, this is 60 degrees this is A and this is B and we draw our force that's going down which is 8 newtons and one of the key things that we need to remember here is that the for the moment that we're going to act here is not exactly going to be 8 newtons because we are only interested in perpendicular distance and the force which is perpendicular to that so the distance we know is 20 centimeters um, and to find the perpendicular to this the 8 newtons is not perpendicular to it this red line is the perpendicular force so we need to find what the um, angle is to find out what our force is going to be and we know that to find the angle here we can do multiple different ways um, the first way is that you can draw a fake right angle triangle here and therefore we know that the interior angles of this right angle triangle need to be 180 so this is 90 this is 60 and therefore this must be 30 degrees here Alternatively, you could make a triangle here, and this is 60 degrees, um, and then you would um, draw your triangle like this. Um, we're going to use the first one here with the 30 degrees, um, and we're going to draw a triangle. Again, we're going to redraw the red line, which is the perpendicular to the um, surface, and we're going to draw it here to make a new triangle. Um, so this is at 90 degrees uh, and now we've got a triangle which we're going to draw here so this is a this is going to be uh, 90 degrees here um, and this is our angle which is 30 degrees so from here we, we know that this is going to be opposite this is the side that we're interested in because it's perpendicular to AB and then 8 is going to be our hypotenuse. Uh, so from here we just use um, sine 30 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is 8. So here is going to be 8 sine 30, which is equal to 4. Um, so the force here that we're interested in is going to be 4 newton. So the component of the force that is actually perpendicular to our length is 4 newtons. From here, we can substitute that into our moments equation. So our perpendicular distance, we want to convert that into meters. So 20 uh, centimeters is the same as 0 0.2 meters. So therefore, our moments is equal to 4 times 0 0.2, which is equal to uh, 0 0.8 newton meters. And that's going to be your answer for A. Um, again, you should specify here why it's going to use the specify it will be clear in a moment but you should specify that this is going to be a clockwise moment again a is going to be here and we've got a clockwise moment around there for part c um so part c is, is this is not going to take as long because we already have a similar situation to a um so we know that this is again 20 centimeters this is an angle of 60 degrees so here our moment again is going to be 4 newton meters uh, no sorry not 4 newton meters 0.8 newton meters 
so 0.882 meters and then this is going to go round in a anti-clockwise direction instead because uh, we take C as the middle and our force is going to go around anti-clockwise so it's going to be 0.8 newton meters anti-clockwise and that is the end of this question or question four question seven a mass hangs from a horizontal wooden beam a b of length 0.6 meters the mass is fixed at a point c which lies on the beam between a and b given that the moment of the weight about a is twice the moment about b work out the length of a c so in any of these questions, first thing you should do is draw out the information. Um, so we're given that's a wooden beam of A and B. And we're given that the length of this is going to be 0 0.6 metres. The mass is fixed at C, which lies on the beam between A and B. So it's going to be some point C here. Um, and it is a weight that we are not given. Because it's mass, it will have a weight mass is mg so given the moment of the weight about a is twice the moment about b work out the length a b uh, so given the moment of the weight about a so this is talked about here is twice the moment about b so here we've got two different ones work out the length a c okay so for this situation the first thing we go so moment is equal to force times uh, distance and one thing I'm going to write which is going to be useful so we know that this is C I know that AC plus AB uh, sorry AC plus AB sorry AC plus CB is equal to 0 0.6 okay which is AB so we go from A to C C to B is equal to 0 0.6 that is because we want to find the length AC so we're going to have to use this in some way there's going to be a ratio of some kind here so moment is force times distance. So we know that the force is going to be the same. It's just going to equal W, the weight. And we're given at the moment of the weight about A. So weight of A is given as AC. So the moment, so we're going to call this AC as X. And CB is going to be 0 0.6 minus X. Um, again, you can define ACB as X. It doesn't matter. This is just, you have to define something to make a, a bit of a better formula. Um, so x and then 0 0.6 minus x because the total distance is 0 0.6 and we're going to subtract ac away so moment is equal to weight times the distance so that's going to be x so that's moment um, from a and then the moment that the weight so here now we consider b so if we consider that b is going to be equal to 0 0.6 minus x times the weight and we're told that the moment of the weight is twice the moment about B. So that means A is twice as big as, um, so this one, you have to times this by 2 to e get it to equal to A. So 2 times B is equal to A, or moment of B is equal to A. So therefore we can rewrite this and we can say, well, 2 times 0 0.6 minus X times W is equal to WX. And our goal here is to find what X is because we want to find the length of AC. So here we're going to cross out W and W because they cancel out and we're going to expand out our equation. So it's going to be 2 times 0 0.6 is 1.2 minus 2x is equal to x. Move x to the other side we get 1.2 is equal to 3x and then we divide by 3 so we get 0 0.4 is equal to x. So therefore x, uh, so AC is going to equal to 0 0.4 meters Again, just do a quick check, does that make sense? Well, the total distance is 0 0.6, so yes, um, it fits into our, uh, it, it's a realistic answer that we have. And that is our answer for question seven. Question seven, again, a barge is tethered to a dock at the point P and is being moved into position by two tugs. The forces exerted by the two tugs are shown in the diagram. Calculate the resulting moment acting about P. So here, if we're interested about P, um, so we're going to look at this one here. Um, so that's the first moment that we have is the 1,100 newtons. So again, draw out, so think about what you need to find. So we've got two um, situations here. Uh, we have a uh, 1,100 newton force that is going round, and then from P to the second one. We have, so we're going to label this one force A, and this one force B. Now one thing that we know already is that 
they are both going to be a clockwise moment, uh, anti-clockwise moment, sorry, because that's going to rotate the barge anti-clockwise, and then this B force here will also eventually rotate it around anti-clockwise. So we know that they're going to be in the same um, same direction, so therefore they're going to add together in the end. But let's take it step by step. So let's start with A. So A, first things first, is the moments formula. So moments is equal to force times distance. Um, so from here, we have um, 60 times, so it's going to be, not 60, sorry, um, so we've got the distance is equal to 120 meters, um, and that's the perpendicular distance, so that's fine. And then we have the force. Now again, it has to be the perpendicular force to your length, so here we're only interested in this force here. And as you can see that the force is going off at an angle, 1,100 newtons. Here, there are multiple ways to think about this. Again, you can draw two possible triangles. The first triangle you can draw is you can draw, make a triangle here um, with 1,100 meters the hypotenuse, 60 degrees the angle, and this is the side that you're interested in. So that's the moments, the force that's going to be used for the moments. Alternatively, you can keep with this triangle here, but you have to change the angle to 30 degrees. I'm going to keep with the first triangle that I do. Um, so I'm going to draw... Again, we, the reason why we're doing this is because we want to find the perpendicular force to our distance, essentially. Remember, our, the rule for moment is that it's perpendicular distance times force. Um, so here it's going to be 60 degrees. This is 1,100, and this is our force, our initial force that we're trying to find. That is going to apply to our moments. Again, this is just going to be sine 60 is equal to opposite F over 1,100. So F is equal to 1,100 sine 60 and on the calculator this gives a horrible answer so I'm going to leave this as it is just for now because it's a you get a horrible number it's better to, if you can uh, just leave it like that in that form um, and then we're going to find the moment so the moment is equal to 120 which is the distance times our, a force which is 1100 sine 60 so that's going to be 120 times 1,100 sine 60, which is equal to a horrible number. Um, so that's going to be equal to 132,000 sine 60. And again, we'll, we'll, we'll um, write up a number in a moment. So that's the moment for A. And then we're going to look at B. Now B is a bit more trickier because it's very easy just to think, oh, well, it's just... 120 meters, right? We, we don't care about the vertical height or that it's 20 meters. Here you've got to actually find the distance here um, to our point P. Um, so in this situation we're going to first of all find this distance, so it's going to be 120 squared times 20 squared square rooted to find our distance PB. Um, and then we plug that in, so it's going to be 120 squared plus 20 squared which is going to equal, so PB is equal to 20 root 37. From here, um, we then need to work out the angle. Well, we know that this is a right angle, um, and we know that the line, the, so from this angle here is a right angle, and this line is going directly to the other side, so it must be exactly halfway across. So we're going to say that this is going to be um, 45 degrees here. Um, although, um, I'm trying to think, that, that I would actually not go through that way, I wouldn't guarantee it's 45, it, I mean, it's quite a assumption, but we can find this um, through tan, so, oh, no, that's fine, so I'm actually going to find the angle here, um, just to double check, so we're going to find, so we know that this is a right angle, we're going to find this angle here, because um, then we know that we could do 90 minus that angle, so here we're going to do, so this is our hypotenuse, so if we draw out our triangle that we have, this is 120, this is 20, and we want to find this angle here, x. So we're going to use tan, so tan x is equal to opposite, so 120 over 20, so x is equal to tan 120 over 20, which is not, so it was a good job we checked that um, well, that was a wrong assumption that I made, and I made a very common mistake there is to uh, just assume, oh, it must be 45 degrees. Um, so here we found that this angle here is equal to 
um, 5, 4 degrees. If we do tan inverse of that. So we know that this is 80.54, so therefore we can then say, well, this is going to be 90 minus x. So that's going to be 90 minus 80.54, which is equal to uh, 9.46 degrees. So we now have, uh, yes, yeah, so this is going up at 9.46. Um, and again, we can use this to find some angles. Um, so we know that the 2000 newtons is making a 45 degree angle um, with the um, with the vertical line going downwards. We can also find what this angle is um, just by doing, um, well, we know that this because of the, um, we already know, we've done 90 minus x before, so we know that this must be 80.54 uh, degrees. Um, so from here, we now have a, um, a weird triangle that's going to occur. So we've got this one here. Um, we've got a force that's 2000 that's going off at an angle. And to find this angle that it makes with the line, we're going to say that this is going to be the equivalent of 45 plus 80.54. So 45 plus 80.54 is going to equal 125.54 degrees. So again, we want to find what the perpendicular line is. I'm going to then extend this out, and I'm going to find what this angle is here. Um, so this angle here is going to be um, 180 minus 125.54, which is equal to 54.46 degrees. Um, and then again, we're going to make the same triangles that we've been doing all the way. So again, we want to find, so this is going to be perpendicular um, to our surface, I, again, my drawing is not going to be accurate because I haven't drawn accurately drawn out the angle, but you're going to make a perpendicular line here, and you know that this is 2000, and you know that one of these is 54.46. So let's just redraw this, um, this triangle here properly. So we're going to have the following. So this is going to be 90 degrees. This angle here is going to be 54.46 degrees. And this is going to be equal to 2,000 newtons. And the angle that we are interested in is going to be this angle here. So again, we're going to use sine 54.46 is equal to opposite, which is what we're interested in, the question mark, divided by 2,000. So it's going to be 2,000 sine 54.46 is equal to question mark. Plug that in, we get 2,000 sine 54.46, so that's equal to uh, 1,627.42, and that's equal to our perpendicular force. So now, once we've got all of that, we can then find our moment for B. So our moment for B is equal to um, our distance, which is 20 root 37 times 1,627.42. So 1627.42 times 20 root 37 is equal to uh, 19798.1879. And then we're going to add that together with our moments to find our total moment. So our total moment is equal to uh, uh, 132,000 sine. 60 plus 197984 and we can plug that into our calculator so 132000 sine 60 plus 197984 is equal to 31229935 so altogether this is going to equal uh, 312,299 newton meters altogether um, so then the next thing we've got then is we have um, what's a modelling assumption that we have made. Um, so uh, as we made an assumption by two tugs, um, so we have, um, we're treating, well, we're treating by two tugs. So I suppose one thing say the tugs are treated as, um, as just as like model the strings. 
um, and we've assumed that the um, the weight, so we tethered to a dock at point P, um, so we're assuming here that the barge was also weightless um, as well, so there's no weight being considered here, although that's assuming that it's in midair. Um, so yeah, um, and we're assuming that the barge is also um, a uniform barge, I think as well. And yeah, that should be enough for your modeling assumptions in this one. Okay, question eight. The loading door AB on a transport airplane is to be closed. The door is four meters long and has a weight of two and a half thousand newtons. The door is angled at 45 degrees to the horizontal and is hinged at B. A force of F newtons that acts vertically upwards at A is shown in the diagram. By modeling the door as a uniform, I'll show you that in order for the door to move, S must be greater than 1,250 newtons. Okay, so for this one, um, what we're going to do is we're going to um, redraw this as just a rod. Um, so this is going to be B here. Um, we've got A. We know that um, it has a weight of 2,500, so we know we're going to put our weight going down directly downwards. Um, we know that it's 45 degrees to the horizontal, so that's 45 degrees here. And by extension, because this is, this is um, 90 degrees to each other, the horizontal and vertical, therefore this must be 45 degrees as well. And therefore this is 2,500 newtons. And we also know that F is going directly upwards. So um, we can show that in order for the door to move, so there's lots of ways that we can think about this. The way that I'm going to think about it is we're going to take moments from B. The reason why we're going to take moments from B is because we, even though we don't know what F is, we know what 2,500 is, and then there's nothing going on at B. So we know that the um, AB is equal to 4 metres. So that means that this distance here must equal 2 metres, and therefore this is also 2 metres. So we can find the moments, first of all. So... Um, we're going to find the moments of the two and a half thousand newtons. So the first things first is we need to uh, draw our triangle. So we can draw a triangle here. Um, this is 90 degrees. We know that this must be 45 degrees because it's going to be the same angle as the, um, well, both 45 degrees. So the whole thing, all the angles we consider uh, is 45. So we don't need to worry about this one. It's quite a nice one to do. Um, so here we're looking for the perpendicular one. Uh, so a perpendicular force is here. So that's our F for this moment. Um, so then from here, we're just going to um, plug in our values. So again, we've got our triangle, which is um, like this. This is 2,500. This is 45 degrees. And this is 90. And our F that we want to find is here. So in this case, we're going to use cosine. So cos 45 is equal to opposite. Um, uh, sorry, my bad. Uh, is equal to adjacent over two and a half thousand. So 2,500 cos 45 is equal to F, which is equal to um, 1,700. So F is equal to 1767.766. That's quite a horrible one. Um, so for this one, I'm going to leave F as that. And then we're going to say, well, the moment is equal to um, uh, the moment here is going to equal uh, ba, 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 2,500 cos 45 times the distance, which is 2. So that's going to equal 5,000 cos 45. So that's our moment um, for that's going to occur um, at the 2,500 newtons. Now, here you can find an exact value, you can plug it in your calculator, but because it wants 1,250 newtons, I'm going to leave it in this form because it's quite a horrible number. Um, so there's just a bit of an exam technique here, it is, looks horrible, but because we want to be greater than 1,250, I'm, I'm going to just leave it in this form and then we'll come back to it later on. We might we might be able to just put it back into a normal form later. Um, so here, what's happening at B, the reason why we're interested is because the two and a half thousand newtons is going to create a anti-clockwise moment, but the force here is going to create a clockwise moment. So therefore, I know, assuming, let's first of all assume that it's in equilibrium, so we know anti-clockwise is clockwise, and we want to lift the door up. So therefore, the moment of F must be greater than the moment of two and a half thousand newtons. 
So here I know that um, the f moment, so um, f moment is going to be greater than 5000 cos 45. So now we're going to find well, what's the moment of f. Again, we're going to draw the same diagram, um, a similar diagram again. So we're going to draw a triangle, a right angle triangle, because we want to find the perpendicular one, which is going to be our moment force. So we're going to call this one F moment. So to find our F moment, um, it's going to be a okay, very similar idea. So this is going to be 45 degrees, so 90. Um, and so our triangle is going to look something like this. So this is F. This is going to be our um, F moment force. And this is going to be our 45 degrees. So here we're going to say, well, uh, it's going to be the equivalent of, um, so we want to find, uh, what do we want to find? Let's find F. We know that F moment times 4 must be greater than 5,000 cos 45. Okay, so that's the force of the moment times the distance. So that tells you your moment. So the force of the moment times, so I suppose I've, Kind of use the same thing twice, so let's call this just let F two. So we'll call this F two. So that's the force of the of the the moment of, of F. So that's F two times four is equal to five thousand cos forty five. Why are we timesing it by four? Well, we know that the distance from A to B is four, and, and the moment F is happening at A. So we know that that distance is four, and we know that the force is occurring at F two. However, we won't, we're not interested in. Um, F2, we're, we're interested in F. So let's convert F2 into F by using trigonometry. So we know that's the right angle triangle. So then from here, it's going to be um, sine 45 is equal to F2 over F. So it's going to be F sine 45 is equal to um, F2. So therefore, we're going to put that in. So it's F sine 45 times 4 is equal to 5,000 cos 45. From here we're going to divide by 4. Uh, in fact we're going to divide by 4 sine 45. So that means it's going to be f is greater than 5000 cos 45 divided by 4 sine 45. And we know that essentially it's the same as 1 over tan 45 which is equal to 1. Remember that tan um, tan x is sine x over cos x, so 1 over tan x is equal to cos x over sine Although at this stage here, you can just plug in the numbers. Um, and 5,000 divided by 4 is equal to 1,250. So here, tan 45 is 1, so 1 over tan 45 is just equal to 1. So that cancels those two, and then 5,000 over 4 is 1,250 newtons. And there you have proven that um, the F must be greater than um, 1,250. The last question we have here is a uniform rod of length 8 metres and weight 50 newtons rests on a support that is 2 metres from A. The rod is held in a horizontal position by a force F that acts vertically downwards at A. Work out the magnitude of F. Okay, so in this situation, so whenever I have these situations here, the first thing I do is uh, assume that it's in equilibrium, um, which it tells you in the hint, you can pretty much assume that it's in equilibrium, unless it tells you it's not. So here, if it's in equilibrium, that means there's two things. That means all the vertical and the downwards forces equal each other, and that means that the moments in total are equal to each other, so anti-clockwise is equal to clockwise. So first of all, let's do the vertical forces that create an equation. So we have the upwards forces, which is R, and that's equal to 50 plus F. And that's given to you in, in the second hint. And then the second one we have is work out the magnitude of F. So now we need to work out, well, where do we take moments from? Well, if we're to take moments from somewhere, we need to take it. We want to find what F is. That's our goal for part A. We don't know anything about R, so this is probably a good position to take moments from because when we take moments from somewhere, we ignore the forces that are acting at that position. 50 newtons we know, so it's probably a bad idea to take it from there. And then we've got B, which will give us two unknowns if we take moments from there. So we're going to take moments from R. 
and if we look at which, which, which direction they're going, we know that F is going to go um, uh, uh, counterclockwise, so F is going that way, and 50 is going to go clockwise, so we're going to put 50 in that direction. The next thing then is we need to find the distances to see our moments, so um, the distance here is going to be 2F. Now the 51 is a bit more trickier because we haven't got a direct distance between R and 50, so we need to go to the question, and the question states that it's a uniform rod. If it's a uniform rod, that means that the weight acts in the middle. And the length of the rod is 8 metres, so therefore the weight acts at 4 metres from A or B. Um, so here we already know that this is 2 metres away, so therefore from A, so therefore 50 must be the other 2 metres away. So here we know that the distance must equal 2 metres, so then our moment is going to be 50 times 2. So 2F is equal to 100 uh, newton metres, and then we divide it through by 2, so it's going to be 50 is equal to um, F is equal to 50 newtons, and that gives us our answer to part A. And then to find, work out the reaction of the support, we go back to our initial equation we set up, which is R is equal to 50 plus F. Plug in 50, we get R is equal to 50 plus 50, which is equal to 100 newtons. And that is your answer for 1B. And that is the end of these given questions on moments. If you have any further questions, please let me know.